Alrighty, so I just have two goals with this new series, uh, Relaxing Rapid. Number one being that it is relaxing, you know, if it helps you fall asleep even better. And then number two, educational. I'm hoping with a longer time control and some of my explanations, you will uh, learn a few few things from, from these videos. So just let me know in the comment section after, but uh, enjoy this rapid game. Played a new opening. Should be fun. There we go. I found a nice 700 to try my uh, ASMR skills on. We're going to start with E4. Keep it simple. Um, I mean, I grew up playing Knight F3 here, just the fried liver. I'm tempted to try something else just for the uh, the audience. And I think I will. I'm going to try the Danish Gambit, which is uh, two d four against the King's Pawn opening. Oh wow! Black does not take that pawn, and I think uh, that's a bit of an issue. I think this is a, what we call an opening mistake. So let's calculate here. D takes E5. F takes E5. That's a one for one trade. But I think I can follow up with Queen H5 check. Checking the king on the diagonal and also hitting E5. And I don't see how black defends against both. So let's do that one more time. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, queen, h5, check. If they block with the pawn, then we can take e5. If they move up with their king, we can take e5 and do they have any other move outside of that hmm no they're only the pawn can block the check or the king has to move all right i think we can try that let's do d takes e5 The reason, you know, f6 doesn't look very good because it feels like it weakens the king a little bit, the light squares. Feels a little loose. Because another move I'd be interested in playing as white would be bishop to c4. You know, developing the bishop. But also, that bishop has a really good diagonal because black has lifted that f pawn and that actually prevents black from castling. If the bishop gets on c4 and it can cover the g8 square. And if you're a Ben Feingold viewer, you'll know never play f6. So this is in violation of a few principles. My opponent played f6 after 7 seconds, and now they're thinking. I think they see what's coming. You got 30 minutes on the clock. You might as well spend a bit more time if you're unfamiliar with the opening. As opposed to making a mistake and then spending your time figuring out how to get out of it. Okay. You know what? I think that's a good move. I think uh, taking the pawn would have been a mistake. So let me try something here. If I take this, I'm just up a pawn because I just captured a pawn for free. 
but is there something else I can go for? Maybe some sort of checkmate idea with bishop c4 and queen d5? Or is this theory? According to chess.com, this is called the Nimza Witch Defense Kennedy Hammer Gambit. So maybe my opponent here, rated 742, has prepared this against me. This is theory, according to chess.com. The Kennedy Hammer Gambit. Well, that makes me think twice if I want to keep that pawn. Some dangerous 700s out there. And I've already encountered tough opposition from India in the past. What do we think? Do we believe? Do we believe in Black's compensation? I think, I think it's best by test. Generally, it's a good habit to take material. If you get proven wrong, it's a lesson. But for the most part, being materialistic is good in chess. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this pawn and then develop. I'm up a pawn, temporarily up two pawns. I was hoping to get a quick win, but this gambit might have uh this knight c six move. I don't think I've seen it before. I don't really see a logical move for black besides knight takes f6. And as soon as I say that, queen takes. I don't like that as much because the knight wants to develop so that black can castle. Alrighty. Well, it's time for me to develop now that I'm up a pawn. So knight c3 or knight f3. Generally speaking, you develop your knights first. Bishops get stronger later on. Mm. You know, I'm thinking about knight c3. I'm just a little concerned about bishop b4 pinning the knight. A little worried about that. So I'm going to start with knight f3 first because I don't see how black can attack this knight. I don't think this gambit is super well known. Like, I don't think I could make a YouTube video calling it the hammer gambit and expect people to like click on it. Like, oh, I know that gambit. I think, uh, I think I'm going to have to come up with something else. But I'm up a pawn. King seems safe. And it's a nice 30 minute game so that people can fall asleep all right bishop to d6 that's certainly a developing move but it doesn't really pressure any of my pieces so now i'm really thinking about bishop c4 because bishop c4 prevents black from castling so i like bishop c4 and the other move I'm thinking about is knight c3, because then I can maybe jump into d5 right away and uh, harass the queen on f6. I feel like I can go bishop c4 anyways. Hmm. You know what? Kingside castling seems pretty good. I'm going to go bishop c4. I don't see, you know... I can even threaten to take on g8. Because if black recaptures, black loses castling privileges. It's either the king or the rook have moved. You can no longer castle. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I think it's definitely a bit of a threat. And then uh, my next move might just be castling myself. So I'm up a pawn right now, and I feel like black's king could be in a tough spot. Okay, that is definitely a threatening move. My bishop is being attacked, and my knight is kind of being attacked. It's defended, but 
If black gets to play knight takes f3, they do double my pawns. And that probably is going to dissuade me from castling kingside. Hmm. At the same time, I'm up a pawn and black is offering to trade knight for knight. Usually trades are good when you're ahead in material, right? So by that logic, I should trade here. I can also just take here and trade even more. But let's keep it simple. This knight's attacking two pieces or putting pressure on two pieces. Let's just trade. Let's just take on e5 with a knight. And uh, we're still putting pressure on the light square diagonal. And um, yeah, I think it, uh, I think black still has some issues. I do see a matter of concern though. If black plays queen takes e5 here and I get clumsy or sloppy and you castle kingside, you run into checkmate. So that's why you shouldn't pre-move in a 30 minute game, right? Kingside castle, castling's usually good. Unfortunately, it runs into checkmate. So that is no good. That would be a very uh, bad way to go out. And that's why you got to look at what your opponent's threatening too. Queen and bishop, that's a battery. So uh, we're not castling. H3 doesn't really stop that threat. F4 blocks the diagonal, but my pawn on E4 is hanging right now. So I either go f3 or maybe knight c3 and develop. Hmm. f3 weakens my own diagonal, which I don't like. Knight d2 defending blocks my bishop on c2, which I don't like. Queen f3 is something to consider. It does defend the pawn. It threatens queen f7. That is something. But <laughs> one thing I like about knight c3 is that then I threaten f4 because e4 is um, protected and then my pawns might be able to push black away. Hmm. This is definitely, uh, there's a bunch of options. Queen f3, they're going to go knight f6. And you know, I might be worried about this rook sliding over to f8 and black generating a discovered attack on the queen. I don't like bringing my queen out early unless I think it's really good. I don't think it's bad to bring the queen out to f3, but it's hard to go wrong with a move like knight c3 here. Developing the knight, defending the pawn, and also keeping the option open of queenside castling, right? Black... I mean, black right now can't castle queens that easily because their bishop is on c8, but white is only two moves away. Bishop e3, for example, queen d2, and all of a sudden black will find themselves in a bit of trouble if white queenside castles and just puts a bunch of pressure on the d-file. So I'm keeping both options open here. It's hard to go wrong with knight c3, whereas queen f3 could be a really good move. But sometimes if you develop your queen out early in the opening, it becomes a target uh, for your opponent's pieces. And I see some situations where that could be the case. So I'm going to stick to the basics just for now. Once I'm developed, I do like to attack, but you want to get your pieces set in. Because let's say black. Black's attacking with their queen and bishop, but if it doesn't work, they're way behind the development. They haven't invested in their light squared bishop. Their knight is still sitting on g8. So there's some tough, there's a tough future for black if I manage to survive as white here. You know, I want to bring my queen out, push the pawns, push the pieces back, and then all of a sudden black's going to be very cramped because they haven't, haven't uh, pushed any pawns in the center to facilitate some development. Uh, 
At the same time, I thought this was a pretty good threat. Definitely got me to think twice. And uh, if I'm playing black here, I'm probably going to play knight g8 to f6. Develop the knight. Put more pressure on e4. What else are you going to do? I'm not sure black's in a position to castle. Let's say knight f6 is played and I respond with f4. Then maybe the queen can slide over to some square that's annoying, like c5. Because c5 is annoying because it's a safe square, but it also attacks the bishop on c4, which is a loose piece. We're down on time against the 700 and they're playing an, a gambit I've never heard of. So, you know, could be a scary 700. Could be running into deep Indian prep. You never know. I got still 21 minutes to think about it. All right, C5. My first thought there is that weakens the D5 square permanently and when we talk about that it's like why because the pawn can't go backwards and black doesn't have an e-pawn anymore so if i ever stick a piece here it can't be chased away by pawns it can be chased away by pieces but then it's not really being chased away because that's just the one for one trade once your pawns uh, push forward they lose their flexibility so i'm pretty happy to see that move And now it also takes away c5 from black's queen. So now my next progression is looking at pawn to f4 as a move, as a space gaining move, you know, as a pressuring move, as a building the center. You build your center, pawns in the center prevent, you know, they, they, they gain space. They take away squares for your opponent's pieces. So let's look at f4. Is e4 hanging? No. Is f4 defended? Yes. It's looking good so far. And after I play f4, these pawns are kind of connected. Maybe I can even play e5 and harass this bishop. At the same time, when I go f4, the queen has to stay close to this bishop because this bishop on d6 is no longer defended by a pawn on c7. Alrighty, I mean, it's hard for me not to play f4. I could make a normal move. What's a normal move? Bishop e3. That's one. Castling is the only move not to play. Um, queen e2, for example, just to move my queen off the back rank so that I can prepare to queenside castle. That looks pretty tempting. But I'm going to go with the most direct move. e4 is a pretty direct opening, open positions. You play the position. I'm going to go pawn to f4. Everything looks defended right now. And there's a lot of ways for black to go wrong. If their queen slides here, that's done. Slides here, it's captured. And if it goes to f6, then we have pawn to e5, forking the queen and the bishop. So all I see out of safe moves are e7 and d4. D4 is not very desirable because you're offering to trade queens and double your pawns while being down a pawn. But E7, you're also getting pushed back. So some tough options here. I am hoping you fall asleep before I, I checkmate my opponent. That's the goal. So I'm taking my time here. Yeah, if you give me a couple moves as white, I'd love to play e5 with the pawn. I'd love to develop this bishop to e3 and maybe on a good day get my queen on this diagonal. Kind of depends. 
but everything is defending, uh, defended. I'm ahead in development. I have more space. Things are looking good. I only see two moves for black. Some of you might play queen takes f4, hang your queen. It happens. Some might play queen here. Queen here is probably the worst move. So pat yourself on the back if you thought about queen h5 because it hangs a queen for free with check. But it also hangs the bishop for free. And that's a pretty important bishop. So it's a talented move. Um, but there's some drawbacks. Scorched earth. Lose as many pieces as possible. Queen h5 is the move. I think queen d4 is likely to be played. And then that's kind of a tough decision for white. Trading is good when you're up. But at the same time, if you want to checkmate your opponent and you trade the queens, it reduces the probability. Yep. That's a little annoying. However, there's some possibilities here. I'm not a guy who likes to trade. Trading here is totally good. You trade the queens, right? It's a one for one trade. And now your knight's being attacked by that pawn and you can move your knight probably to d5 or b5. Two juicy squares after the queen trade. And b5 even attacks the bishop and the pawn and probably black's gonna lose a second pawn. However, that's not as fun because there won't be a checkmate as easily. So the question is, do we trade queens or not? You know what, for the sake of good habits, I'm gonna trade queens because it also simplifies the game. I'm trying to get people to sleep, chess end games, plus my voice, hopefully that combination, because if I'm going for checkmate, you might stay awake. Let's trade the queens. There's a benefit, we're already up a pawn. On top of that, doubled isolated pawns. So black is gonna be down a pawn, behind in development, behind in space, and facing a crippled structure. And now I got two options here. There's more than two. There's really one, a4, b5, d5, e2, d1, and b1. Quite a few options. All right, try to see all of those. You can move your knight backwards to the side, up. And out of these, I'll tell you what. I think the central ones look the best. D5 looks good, but I don't like blocking my bishop. E2 looks good because it attacks his pawn. But B5 attacks the pawn, and it attacks the dark squared bishop. And we might threaten knight c7 check, forking the king and the rook. That looks like the most multi-purpose move. Out of all those options, A4 is just no man's land. You're going to have to rationalize that to me. So I'm going to go for knight B5. I have pressure here on C7, on the D6 bishop, and on the D4 pawn. And if black is like, hey, I'm being forked here, I should play bishop c5 and defend that hanging pawn on d4. Then we just slide in on c7, knight c7 check, forking the king and the rook on a8, and then picking up an entire rook that's undefended. One of the benefits of trading queens 
is you might not checkmate your opponent, but your losing chances go down as well because you're less likely to be checkmated or blunder something with the queen. So it's also a positive depending on, you know, how you play. But I'm enjoying this position. I hope you are too. The hammer gambit is losing steam, I think. Black has the same issue as before. Pieces are not developed and there's no pawns in the center. The knight on g8, the bishop on c8, the rooks, they're not doing anything. All black has is this bishop on d6 that's hanging, this double isolated pawn on d4. So the question is, is this still preparation from Krishna? Is this 700 rated prep coming at me? Okay, king, e7, it does defend d6, but we threaten two things. So this decision is not going to take me very long. I could take the bishop, one for one, knight for bishop, and be pretty happy. I'll have the bishop pair. Uh, trading is generally good, but I have the opportunity right now to take the pawn on d4 seemingly for free. And before I take it, I got 16 minutes. I'm just going to double check. Is it really for free? Is there a way I lose that or is there something I'm missing? A check, a pin. Knight takes d4. They give a check. I can just block with the pawn, for example. You know, if I was castled right now and then I took the pawn, I would probably double check if black plays bishop c5 and pins my knight if I'm okay or not. But you know what? There's not a lot to calculate because black has no threatening pieces. I'm going to take the pawn, going up that second pawn. Um, I want to thank Jay Cassidy there. That's 20 gifted subs. I do appreciate that. And knight f6 finally developing. But now we have another case. That move looks off. It looks off because we can play e5. e5 forks the two pieces with the pawn. And a pawn winning a piece is always good. But I was actually hoping to play knight f5 check. Forking the king and the bishop... And the king has no square to move to that still defends the bishop on d6. So then we're talking about winning a bishop for nothing. So two good options, but I have time. Usually you only have one good option, and that's already good enough. Having two is pretty luxurious, and so I'm taking some extra time. E5 is probably a good move anyways, even if black moves out of the way, bishop b4 check, for example, we can block with a pawn, and there's the same dilemma. Two of black's pieces are being simultaneously attacked by a white pawn, and it looks like material loss is inevitable, right? But knight f5 is just cleaner, there's less to calculate, for example. Knight f5 check. The king cannot move up because of our light squared bishop. That is a great bishop. So we're just going to stick to uh, the clean version here. We'll go knight f5 check and uh, see where that king goes. There's only three squares. d8, e8, or f8. f7 and e6 are covered by that uh, bishop there. And we're already up two pawns according to chess.com. That's going to be uh, a bishop on top of that. Despite grabbing material, black is still, you know, I mean, black is still behind in development. So for me, sometimes you don't want to keep grabbing material. If you f find yourself falling behind, you know, you're like, there's at a certain point, you have enough material to win the game. Just get your king castled and play safe. Here, my king looks safe, 
black's not threatening at all. So I don't mind grabbing extra material here, right? It's like, I don't see what black's attacking and a benefit of taking on d6 is that the knight defends e4, which is hanging currently, and it threatens knight f7 check. Forking the king and the rook. So a lot of these moves are multi-purpose, the best kind. So we're going to capture that bishop on d6. A third benefit of the knight on d6 is it blocks the d-pawn from moving. And the d-pawn can't move, then the bishop on c8 struggles to develop. And if the bishop on c8 struggles to develop, then the rook on a8 simply can't get into the game. So fewer and fewer pieces are available for black here. All right, rook f8, I don't see the point of that, but it's a developing move. It does stop knight f7, but I don't see any threats. And this is a perfect time to just remind myself of the basics. Get your king castle and safe. Castling has the benefit of developing a rook. So I'm just going to castle kingside, and now my rook is also ready to join the, the, the party. You know, maybe rook d1 next. Might not be the top move, but it's a safe, strong move that takes away any sort of open king potential. If you give me a couple more moves here, I'm thinking about, you know, developing this bishop finally on c1 either to d2 or e3. I'm thinking about that. And then I can bring this rook in and then I'm done developing and I can look for more. But before I play that move, I want to take a look at knight, F, uh, knight h5, the last move by black. Are they threatening to go to g3? I don't think so. Our pawn can simply capture. Are they threatening to take on f4? Well, let's count the defenders. One defender, the rook. Two defenders, the bishop. And then how many attackers for black? The knight and the rook. Doesn't look enough to me. Looks like black is lacking an attacker. Knight, at, knight takes f4. Bishop takes f4, rook takes f4, rook takes f4, and white looks to be ahead in that exchange. So, not too concerned about the f4 pawn, not concerned about that. Is any other piece hanging? I'm scanning the board. I don't see it. Okay, we can go through that one more time. Knight h5. The only pawn it pressures is f4. So we're going to take a look at that calculation and see if white has enough defenders. If I don't have enough defenders, I'm going to consider playing g3, reinforcing that pawn with one of my other pawns. But I don't think we need to do that. Let's calculate. Knight takes f4. Bishop takes f4. The bishop is covering it. We could also play rook takes f4. But to me, taking with the bishop makes more sense because it also develops the bishop. So knight takes f4, bishop takes f4, rook takes f4, and now my final defender, this rook on f1, slides up and takes on f4, and black has no more pieces there. So I don't think that works out for black. And... Uh, Therefore, I'm not too concerned about that pawn. Let's uh, let's develop this bishop to e3. The only thing we're down on is the clock. Whoa! Pawn to g5. That came out of nowhere. So is that pawn defended? If I take, is there anything defending it? I do not see it. 
If I take, does my rook get exposed? Nope, that rook is super well defended. But you know what? Because my opponent is so careless, carelessly throwing this pawn, I'm somehow not interested. I, I feel like just ignoring it and pushing it and getting a passed pawn, you know? So it's a little, little tricky. Let me think about this. Do we want the passed pawn with f5 and a push forward? When, remember, when you play f5, the bishop now attacks g5. Because when I take g5, I double my pawns and I don't have a passed pawn. I just like all these good options. We're gonna push. Yasser would say push and baby. So we're gonna go pawn to f5. I would love to follow up with pawn to e5 and continue piling on. Now this is another hanging move because bishop takes f4, g takes f4, rook takes f4. You're just uh, losing another pawn as black. But black is already down enough that I think they don't care. And if they don't care, I don't want it. I'm going to continue with my plan. I'm going to play pawn to e5. I like that move because it supports my knight. And if my knight is supported on, on d6, I'm keeping black in a bit of a coffin when it comes to developing. And nothing of whites is hanging as far as I can tell. This pawn on f5 is defended by the knight. There's no check because my bishop covers it. Covering all the key squares as far as I can tell. And I do like a little bit of uh, torture, I guess. It gives me more time. It gives you more time to fall asleep, right? If you give me some more time, I'm probably going to bring this rook to d1. I might go g3 and kick this knight away. But part of chess is reducing your opponent's counterplay. And black is running out of moves. Taking that knight would be, you know, helping black putting it out of its misery. That knight doesn't have squares to go to, right? It can't go here. It can't go here. The only square it can go to is all the way back to h5 where it doesn't do anything. So, yeah, I, uh, I like my pieces right now. It is a good habit to take free pawns, but I'm up a piece and two pawns and uh well 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 immediately when i see that move i have to say i get a little excited i see a check patser sees a check patser gives a check because when the pawn moves from a7 to a6 there's no more defense over the b6 square right all of a sudden my bishop has an available square so let's calculate Bishop b6 check. The king can't move here. It can't go to e8, but it can go to e7. So bishop b6 check. King runs out to e7. Let's keep looking for more checks. I see one more check. Pawn to f6. The pawn to f6 check. Does black's king have any moves? Let's calculate. Check. On b6, king e7, f6 check. Can the king take the knight? No, because we have a pawn defending it. Can the king go here? No, because our bishop or knight defend it. Can the king go up? No, because the bishop on c4 covers the entire diagonal. Can the king take the pawn? No, because the pawn on e5 defends it. Process of elimination, black's only move there when we flush the king out is that they can sack the rook for the pawn. But then that's not checkmate. 
And if it's not checkmate, I'd rather figure out if I can set that checkmate up ahead of time. Because once the king gets out, it's harder to checkmate. It has more more squares to run to. Now, is that winning? Yes. Black would be down a ton of material if they sacrificed their pawn, or sorry, their rook for a couple of pawns. But maybe we can tweak the move order and give ourselves another opportunity to set up that checkmate, right? If I know that the king only has one escape square and that's an e7, is there a move I can throw in first before I give the check that takes that square away? Slapjack says it's a rook for a pawn and knight. Uh, unfortunately, that's very incorrect. Because after bishop b6 check, king e7. And after f6 check, rook takes f6. Black, white can just take knight takes c8 check as an intermezzo. And then take the rook on f6. But we don't need to do that. Why all this calculation? Let's just put the king in a box. Let's go f6 first. And by going f6, we're taking this square away and setting up bishop b6. Can black defend? They can. They can go king c7. But we're trying to score some style points here, and I can definitely see my opponent missing it under the right circumstance. Figured it was worth a try. There was no safe word of this game. Unless my opponent messages me, if they message me and they say something, I will. I'll go easy. But uh, right now we're planning a bishop e6 check. And there's nothing that can block the check. And the king can't move anywhere as of right now. Oh, Krishna here would like to chat. I'm going to accept this. He says, thanks, it's my pleasure. Now, if you ask me, somebody saying, thanks, it's my pleasure, that doesn't sound like a safe word. That sounds like we have to continue. So we're going to continue here. Um, the king, you did find the right move though, unfortunately. You only have four minutes. So this is a good move, trading, but you know what I want to do? I'm going to play pawn to a4. King c7 is a great move. It stops checkmate, gives the king maybe a hideout on b8. I want to go a4 so that I can play a5 and park my bishop on b6. An outpost is what we call it. Sometimes they, you know, they come easy. Sometimes you have to build them. If I can get my pawn to a5, then with my bishop, in unison with my bishop on e3, we should be able to play bishop b6 check and really put the king in a box. And all while this is happening, black doesn't really have moves. So it's a combination. I'm not, not risking much right now. So yeah, my next move is probably a5. I mean, guys, this is going to be a longer game. If you're not falling asleep after 40, 50 minutes, I feel bad. We still have some time to go after that king. In a perfect world, I'll play a5. Black plays rook b8, taking away an escape square. 
and allows bishop b6. b5, that's annoying. That's lashing out. At the same time, let's calculate. What if we take? Isn't this pawn on a6 pinned? Because then our rooks will be touching. And my rook gets to move first and capture that. I think so. Am I missing something? Pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn. And our rook just slides in on a8. Are we missing anything there? Pawn takes is where an in-between move. I don't think so. See, these rooks are connected. Connected rooks mean they defend each other. It's one of the benefits of developing your rooks. These rooks don't defend each other. They're not connected. That's because black's behind in development. And so we're going to just take that pawn. A takes B5. All right, all right. doesn't want to trade anymore. All right, you know what? I mean, this check is super tempting. What do you guys say? I think it's good. B6 check. Our bishop defends it, and we're starting to attack the king. And now I have another move that I'm excited for. It's an Eric specialty. It's going to be rook takes f4. And what I want is I want this bishop to be pointing at the king. I want to set up a discover check. Because now the king can't move, for the most part. Okay, okay. That counts as a move. He didn't take the piece. I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed. Why didn't you take the rook? I thought I was being a nice guy. Okay, well, if you're not going to take the rook after I take a full piece, then uh, I will move the rook and say thank you for the piece. The king is still in a box. It cannot move anywhere legally. And I want to keep it that way. I might consider pushing this pawn up in a moment. Do we take or is that sadistic? For the sake of good habits, my bishop is on c4. I think I have to take that. I think I'm going to have to take that. The king still can't move. And my next move is going to be pawn f7. And then we can promote to a queen or a rook. You guys get to pick. But everything is defended. And the king can't move. And the rook still hasn't moved the entire game. Oh, you want a knight. That's even, that says a lot about you. If you're a rook kind of guy, it's one thing. Some people are suggesting knight. They're looking for a knight checkmate. That says something. That's no safe word. I'll think about it. But uh, yeah, black here. There's really no counterplay. Now Krishna's thinking, I got only a minute 24 for checkmate. I don't want this rook. We're going to keep pushing. That rook 
is a goner I can take. It is defended. King still has the same dilemma. It can't move anywhere. And we're just going to follow up. We're going to turn off auto queen for the good viewers. How do I turn off auto queen? There we go. We found it. We'll bring the knight in. I want to use all the pieces. I definitely enjoy using all the pieces. This rook has not moved yet. So I'm going to bring this rook in. That's rook takes a5 check. And now we get to use all of the pieces. Knight takes d7. That's a checkmate. Got to use every piece this game. Every piece moved. Including the king, including the rook on a5. And uh, let's see what Krishna has to say. If you're still listening, it means you haven't fallen asleep, which is unfortunate, but uh, I do hope you enjoy the game. Let's say GG here. I'm just waiting for a response. I thought we were cool, you know? Well, I guess my opponent's not there. But GG to Krishna, thanks for playing. I hope the viewers enjoyed the... Uh, Rapid chess, kind of ASMR vibe. Playing against the Nimzovich defense, Kennedy Hammer Gambit. Hope you got some sleep. Otherwise, hope you learned something outside of that. Until next time. Spinner.